Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Miniature Painting Myth Busting with Tro and Vince. And today we're going to talk about brushes or brushes or brushes or, well, I guess brushes, just brushes. We're going to, we're going to talk about brushes. One, two, three, four. excited about today's topic because today's topic is something I think we are going to disagree on. Ooh, that's always good. Today's topic is to paint miniatures, you must have an expensive sable hair brush or you must use an expensive sable hair brush for your miniatures. I actually think we do disagree on that. Well, why don't you start? Tell me what you think and the brushes you use. I am using since forever uh, Raphael 8404 size one. Um, I get the question of what brushes do you use like 200 times a day. No exaggeration. Um, it's always in the description. Spoiler alert. But yeah. Uh, I like those brushes because I learned to to paint with really crappy brushes, and I think that actually was a good thing. But once I I got a really good brush, I I just felt like all of a sudden I'm not running the I don't know hundred meter sprint with a ball chained to my leg anymore, um, and that was just a really good feeling. If you have the right tool and a really precise tool, then you're always going to be better off than uh, with a tool that is not as good or degrading too fast. Okay. All right. I understand what you're saying. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you own a dry brush? I know where you're getting it, but I haven't owned a proper dry brush in ages. But more because I'm too lazy to get one. Um, I do have makeup brushes that I use for dry brushing that are okay-ish. So I am all about the, this is my point. I think even you, who is one of the most sable brush purists that are out there, okay? I'm gonna ask you two questions after that. The first one was the dry brush. I, I use makeup brush as well. Like this is what I have up on screen right now as an example of the type of brush I use for my dry brushing. I have lots of different sizes of them, uh, various little things. They're all just things you get in cheap makeup brush packs from you know, the dollar store or from Amazon or something like that. And this is the right tool for the right purpose, right? When I've got a bunch of grit or sand or a base or something like that, this is what I'm using, okay? Now, Trevarian, here's my next question for you. Because I'm gonna, I'm going to prove to you that you don't really, you're not really using expensive sable brushes all the time, okay? Do you have any old sable brushes around that have lost their tip, and yet you still keep them for various purposes? <laughs> oh, wrong one. Um, yeah, I do have a couple of those. Um for yeah painting uh, putting stuff on bases yeah definitely like this one right right now i will openly say you and i are simpatico for detail work to me the raf 8404 it's the same thing i use i love these brushes uh, i just got a couple new ones for christmas uh recently uh i stand behind having sable brushes in your arsenal I think they are an essential tool for doing fine work, especially for really careful, precise glazing, for fine detail work, lines, edges, eyes, whatever small detail. I mean, there's lots of small detail on minis. But for those examples, I think you do need a couple of quality brushes. But... 
Would you like to see what I base coat with, Drove? Because you mentioned you have these old, worn-down sables you're using. This is what I base coat most of my miniatures with. This right here. This is a size 8 uh, artist brush. You, it says artist on it, so it must be good. <laughs> the airbrush is also a good option. This brush right here, the this big, fat, junky brush, is what I end up doing a lot of work with. When I'm working on uh, just base coats, laying down a huge amount of paint, let's say you got a big, giant cloak, you want to work fifth, you know, five different colors of paint, do it real fast, you're going to do a quick wet blending thing, boom. This is the brush. This is what we're getting out. And my supposition to you, Trevarian, is you could do the exact same thing. Right? Like, if you were doing that kind of work, you would have, like, this brush would be functionally identical to your old non, no longer having a sharp tip wrap brush. Right? Because at that point, it's a junk brush. It's what we call a junk brush, right? That's what this is. It just happens to be a junk brush of a different type. As a proof of what I was just talking about, here's some footage from Hobby Cheating 192 where I do some basically wet blending with a big fat brush. So this is a size eight I'm using here in this video. You can see it's a very junky brush, much like what I was just having on display. And I'm working rough. Uh, I'm wiping the brush aggressively to get paint out. I'm not, you know, adding a lot of new water. I'm working wet on wet. This is very much a wet blending type exercise. And you can see here what I'm describing in that this would be actually less efficient for me if I was using a really nice soft sable brush because I couldn't be as rough with it. I couldn't be as aggressive with mixing the paint around. I couldn't get in as well as I wanted. I couldn't wipe and work and really push the paint how I want. These are the types of tasks where this brush excels. It is just my, my preference of when I paint, I kind of want to be in control. So I want to control where the paint goes. And you mentioned wet blending. I don't always have control over where the paint goes with wet blending. It, sometimes it does what it wants, right? Um, so I'm trying to minimize the factors that don't allow me to control paint. So if I have a, a brush that is splayed um, and then do wet blend with it, there is a few hairs that I cannot control and they just go off to the side. And uh, that's, I guess that's why I also like to do um, more basic techniques with a good brush. Well, I think you hit upon something that's really important here that is worth mentioning which is your techniques that you tend to employ. In our last episode, we talked a lot about there is no one perfect way to paint a miniature, that people use lots of different techniques. Absolutely. So check that out. And I think what's important there is that certain techniques require a more precise, a nicer, a higher quality brush than others because they're, it's a technique better suited to a certain tool. For example, I mentioned that your fine sable brush is good for things like very controlled glazes, very controlled precise layer. Finishing work is what I would ultimately wrap a lot of this up to, or detail work, right? You can, we can use any of these generic terms we liked. But if you're somebody who uses a lot of wet blending, or maybe you're somebody who uses a lot of value sketching, right? Uh, Banshee style or Roman Lapotte style where they use a lot of value sketching as early steps in their miniature painting. I mean, Roman famously will often has set value sketches with his fingers. He will finger paint a value sketch on there. That's definitely a long way off of a fine sable brush. That's about as far in the opposite direction as we can go, right? But not everybody uses those techniques. And so to me, it's about finding the way that the tools match with the techniques that you're going to employ. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so one of the last videos I did was where I was um, showing my process a tiny bit, um, you know, start to finish on uh, figure. And I tried to 
think back to to this process and uh, there's definitely also parts and and yeah where i just really slap that paint on and uh, i have not changed my brush doing that so um i don't know uh, what would you say how does a cheaper maybe larger brush um compare to a raphael brush as far as reservoir goes um so do you think they have this the same properties when it comes to how well they hold paint and how much you can work on the miniature without having to constantly dip your brush into paint and compare that to how much control you have when it comes to maybe tip size and sharpness of the tip and being able to use the same tool for a variety of techniques. An important thing to note about the difference between sables and synthetics is that sable brushes not only will often hold a finer tip, but the belly will be a little more expansive uh, as it will it will hold a little more paint, all else being equal, like length of the bristles and, you know, size mm -hmm. of the brush and so on and so forth. It will generally hold the paint a little a little more liquidy, a little more water, and it will generally keep it a little more wet. OK, so to get an equivalent, you have to actually in a synthetic of a sable, you actually have to go bigger. That's why I'm using a size six or a size eight synthetic brush when I'm using these crappy brushes, because then I've expanded the belly of the brush so much, right? Like it's so large that this will hold a ton of paint. And the other advantage here with this is, and I mean, you can see it because you can see this has like the ferrule burn of ink mm -hmm. that's gotten down into the ferrule, right? Something you, you never want to see on your sable brushes, because this means you're getting paint clog down in the ferrule here i don't care if this thing goes bad i have 10 more of these i'll just throw this one in the trash right i think that's a good point um i do not really care about that with my expensive brushes um so i try to get in there and slap paint um and i'm not too worried about paint going up there and when people watch me paint it's like oh, what are you doing uh you're ruining your brush but um yeah, so that's an expense that I gladly take because I just absolutely love the properties of the brush. Um, but I also understand if people are saying they want to do a rougher, they want to treat the brush as rougher, but they also don't want to constantly buy new brushes. So I just try to clean them afterwards and I completely disregard their health while painting. Uh, just to very quickly address a fear here with these nice sable brushes. I see people all the time say, I got a new sable brush, insert brand here that they got. I'm afraid to use it because I don't want to ruin it. It's going to get ruined. Entropy is a thing. All eventually becomes dust. Accept this, okay? But that shouldn't stop you from using a really nice tool that you will get a lot of mileage out of. And if you treat it nicely... If you don't do what Treverian just said, you can get quite a lot of use out of it. But eventually you'll lose the tip. Eventually it will go bad and you'll have to get another one. That's okay. That's just life. The reason I like working with these big cheap brushes, not just because I can ruin them and not waste money because you buy these things in packs of 10 for $4 or something, you know, uh, but also is because it does have a lot of properties I really like. The fact that it's so big means that when I'm using it sideways right when i'm sweeping with it or something i'm pulling a lot of paint and liquid out but also having this really flat actually fairly stiff surface because it's a synthetic and so it actually works as a really nice blending tool for for wet blending which is something i tend to use a lot to set initial initial sort of value scales before i then come back in and, and glaze and pop things and so on and so forth and so working fast and sideways with the brush i get this really big working surface if that makes sense right the the actual surface area of the brush is just larger because when it presses down it sort of flattens out and you get this really nice way to work so it has those properties that because of the technique i'm using it's really good at that particular technique 
unfortunately, um, it boils down again to try finding the tool um, that helps you the most in a given situation. And I say unfortunately because we get to that point a lot, right? But I guess this applies here too. And uh, no, neither of us is right or wrong. Um, it's just preference and what has worked for us. And yeah, I guess everyone just has to find that way. And unfortunately, it's a bit of experimenting again and uh, having to try a few brushes. To me, there are sort of five brushes, brush types that I tend to think should be in your arsenal. But these can be kind of swapped. And I think you're they're in your arsenal too, but you're kind of using different things for it. So one is the thing we talked about at the beginning, a good dry brush, a good makeup brush. By good, I mean something you bought in a pack of five for a dollar at the dollar store, right? They should be soft by the, by the makeup brushes that are for people's eyes because those are naturally very soft because they're meant to hit like, you know, not stab people in the eye. There you go. <laughs> the... Second thing is uh, some kind of large base coating synthetic brush like I've got here. I think that's highly valuable. I think it's um, I think it's something you can use for techniques like wet blending, stippling. Like you don't want to really if you're if you're doing some hardcore nature stippling like on dirt where you're stabbing, you're literally stabbing as opposed to touching very careful dots. Boy oh boy, do you not want to use a nice sable brush for that? That you it will destroy the tip so fast. Three is you do want some kind of solid sable brush because that will that is your proper brush for doing detail and finishing. Four is something that is literal and complete junk, like this thing that I found in the yard somewhere, I think, once, buried under a rock. Like bugs crawled away from it, and then I grabbed this brush. Uh, I use this for, for getting in with washes on bases or things that need to be, or terrain or stuff like that, like things that are, are going to be really, really rough garbage work where I'm just trying to like dip the whole thing in a wash or in an oil wash or something like that and just blah, slather liquid around, right? And I just, I don't, I'm going to ruin this thing over and over and over again. And then five is just the previous form of your nice brushes. So your, your, your sables, once they lose their tip, they're still very useful because they, they still have that quality and I use them for a lot of mid-level layering work where I'm not trying to get precise yet. I don't need the sharp tip because I'm not doing detail, but I want the control. And those have that nice tension that I can do that work with without burning the tip. Those are kind of the five brushes that I, I tend to think of. The way I use those brushes, they become more like a, a universal tool, almost like a Swiss army knife where I feel like they can do all of these things except those that work or the work where they would get destroyed, you know, using paint in a rough way uh, and stippling and, and just complete disregard for a brush. Try to keep an open mind. If, if you, even if you prefer one or the other, uh, don't close yourself off towards trying um, brushes that are, you know, maybe more ruined or maybe stiffer uh, or our brushes for a different purpose and just try to experiment with it. Uh, even if you have that one style and if you're like me and you're saying, no, I just use that for everything. Uh, even then it's good to, to try out brushes in a completely different way. And who knows what you might find. Maybe you find the perfect technique. So there you go. Do you need a sable brush? Yeah. Probably. Does that need to be the only brush you use? Probably not. Trevelyan says that's the brush he uses most of the time, and it's true, and he uses it as a multi-purpose tool, but even he has older brushes or junky brushes he'll use. For me, it's about the right tool for the right job. I don't get out a hammer when I need to screw something into the wall, and in the same way, I'm not using a really fine, sharp, expensive brush when I need to slap around a base coat. So, there you go. I hope that helps you find the brushes you need and you, that suit your style. But as always, I thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, this series alternates between my channel and Trevarian's channel. So if you're not already subbed to him, his channel is linked below and you can find the alternating episodes over there on his channel. Or you can see the playlist 
which has all of the videos on both of our channels. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.